We are joined now by Jonathan Dekelchen, the father of one of the Israeli-American hostages still being held by Hamas. He joins us from Tel Aviv. Jonathan, thank you so much for being with us. I can only imagine what a difficult night it has been for your family, for all of the families of the hostages. Have you been able to connect with the Goldberg Polins or any of the families who lost their loved ones? Yes, I have. I have corresponded with them um, uh, over the course of the last few hours, uh, expressing condolences. Uh, we are all absolutely horrified by the needless, senseless death of these six beautiful young people. What, if anything, have you been told by the Israeli government about how these six individuals died and when they died? Hamas is saying that they were killed by Israeli bullets. Do you believe that? Yes, we um, from from we know what we know from the media, actually, and from some uh, statements from our uh, military. Uh, they died very shortly uh, before they were found by IDF troops. Um, all of them uh, were were certainly living in a state of deprivation uh, for many many months. But in the end, as your reporter said, uh, they were executed by Hamas. And the same is true, evidently, of six other bodies of Israeli hostages who were returned the week before, uh, four of them from my kibbutz. And those were older men, uh, in this case this week, um, uh, younger people, but all of them alive um, for months in Hamas captivity. So time is absolutely working against us and, quite honestly, against the people of Gaza as well. Well, you heard MTA's report that several of the hostages who were killed were next in line to be released if there were to be a ceasefire. Who do you hold responsible for the fact that there is still no ceasefire today? Well, the situation exists because Hamas on October 7th invaded Israel, killed nearly 1,400 people, committed mass rape, mass looting, destroyed uh, homes and property, and has refused since October 7th to return all of the hostages. Now, that being said, you know, given that we're dealing with Satan, I mean, that's sort of the, the launching point for any discussion, um, Israelis at large, and, and myself included, have been extremely critical of the Israeli government for uh, not uh, negotiating in good faith now for many, many months. Uh, there is no explanation, uh, a reasonable explanation, why our government is refusing to deeply engage in these negotiations and complete them when our entire senior military establishment and intelligence community has been saying publicly and openly for weeks and months that the time has come to end the fighting in Gaza, get our hostages home, as many alive as possible. We know that many dozens of the 101 remaining hostages have already been murdered. And to end the madness in Gaza, simply the government that is preventing it. You are originally from Connecticut. Your son, Segui, is the father of three young girls, one of whom was born while he was in captivity. He's among 38 hostages taken from your kibbutz. What, if anything, do you know about where he is being held and what condition he is in? Well, one, one small uh, correction. On October 7th, 79 people were taken from our kibbutz and 51 slaughtered. Uh, there are 29 remaining from my kibbutz. We know that, well, he's 36 years old, father of three little girls. Um, his seven-month pregnant wife uh, miraculously survived with their two little girls on October 7th. Um, the only thing that we know for sure about Sagi is that as of late November, early December, uh, we know that he was alive, wounded, but alive. And we know that because in the first hostage exchange, um, 40 of the 100 women and children who were released by Hamas in that first negotiation were from our kibbutz, and a handful of them had seen Sagi and other uh, and men mostly in the tunnels and could tell us that he was still alive. Israel's opposition leader is now calling the Netanyahu government a death cabinet. He's calling for labor strikes against Netanyahu. Do you share that anger? You said that Netanyahu has not engaged seriously. Why do you think that is? 
Well, I don't think it's just my opinion alone. I think the vast majority of Israelis now have come to believe by his actions, not his words, but by his actions, that he's been driven primarily by a desire to retain power with a narrow, very radical messianic coalition in the Israeli government. And he has made choices to pursue this fantasy of total victory over Hamas, a terrorist organization, and no doubt. But this idea of total victory is a messianic one from his coalition partners and not realistic. And he's preferred that, uh, at least to date, over the well-being of all the hostages. There are seven Americans still remaining in Hamas captivity amongst the 101. CBS News has confirmed that National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan is going to meet virtually today with you and the other families of American hostages. Do you believe that the U.S. government has done everything it can to bring these hostages home? Well, I think the U.S. government itself would say that they would have done enough when all the hostages are home, all of the 101. They say that in our meetings. Uh, I can absolutely state that since a couple of days after October 7th, the U.S. administration from top to bottom has been extraordinarily supportive of the hostage families, uh, inclusive, sensitive, empathetic. I believe that they have done everything in their power up to now, but at the end of the day, two men have to say yes. One is Yechia Sinwar in a tunnel under Gaza somewhere with the blood of thousands on his hands, uh, Israelis and Palestinians, and Benjamin Netanyahu in Jerusalem. Uh, President Biden, I believe, has done everything that he can. We need, we need some more, but uh, time, time is certainly against us. There's no question of that. Well, we are hoping that you get more, and we appreciate you sharing your story with us today. Jonathan Dekelchen, thank you so much.